So we were, we're with Martin Bell, he's the uh, maitre d' of, of Pacific Dawn and uh, here we are in the waterfront restaurant. Martin, you're obviously very versatile. Last night you were filling, was it 625? 635. 635 champagne glasses. Um, you obviously get a real kick out of, uh, of, of looking after the passengers. Yeah, we do. It's a, we have a great job. I mean, as maitre d', my main responsibility is the, the waterfront dining room and also responsible for all the crew mess side as well and work very closely with the food and beverage services manager on deck 12 to provide all the passenger services in terms of the restaurant side. But yeah, it's it's a good kick, it's great. We, we start obviously being on the dawn, we have seven day cruising, so we, every seven days we've got another nearly 1,900, 2,000 passengers coming, so just being at the door, helping with the reservations, meeting and greeting people, and we get a lot of regular passengers, people that have cruised with us. We've already got one couple that's on the hundred and I think it's ninth cruise now they're on wow. with us, so getting to know them all and seeing them all again, it, it's, it's great. So you know them almost by first name too? Just about, just about, yeah. Still keep it professional, Mr. and Mrs., but yeah, just, just about, so. Yeah, but the, the thing is that um, for each passenger, it's their, either their first cruise, but it's their cruise. For you and the crew, it's, um, the, the you know multiple crews. How, how do you sort of keep that um, that sort of fresh spirit going? Um, I think what we do, and certainly what I push with the team, is, 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 is through their personality. What makes the real dining service is, yeah, we, we have the service standards and we have what we offer as a product, but what really makes the passengers' experience stand out from something else? Because I, I think it doesn't matter where you are in the world or which ship in your world, what, what you remember is the service, and I think it's pushing the personality of the waiters and their assistance to, for that to come out with the passengers, so whether it's they're doing tricks or just talking to them um, and reading them as an individual, making them, making what they want and what they expect and identifying their needs is I think what, what makes it uh, best for the passenger because then they get what, what they expect and they get that sort of wow factor from. Yep. Now you could be a maitre d' in any restaurant anywhere in the world, what's so special about being the maitre d' of a, of a restaurant and a cruise ship? Um, there's not many restaurants that have 810 seats or, uh, that you sort of fill all at the one time. So it, I think it's what I, why I enjoy ships and why I've been at ships now for five years. And for those who've worked in hotels and, and background restaurants back, back on land, is it, every night is busy. Every night there's new challenges. Every night it's like a, what I'd say a Saturday night. Every night is buzzing and busy. And um, you know you're, you're going to be busy every night. You know you're going to be doing 12, maybe 1,300 bookings a night. Whereas at home, you know, I remember doing Sunday night. Uh, duty management and shifts in hotels and you've got 10 people in house and you know the restaurant's dead and quiet and you're kind of bored so but here it's just constantly on the go all the time. Yeah. So there's been an, an adrenaline rush? Yeah, constant, constantly on the go, constant challenge. Yeah. And how did you find your way uh, onto cruise ships? Um, did um, someone tap you on the shoulder or did you...? No, what, what, what I was working um, for Intercontinental back home in the UK and I saw an advert for P&O UK to apply for restaurant manager and I applied for it. Um, they got back and said there's no position that's been fulfilled now. I said okay, never mind. So I never thought anything of it, went back to what I was doing. But a year later I got a phone call from them and they said we have a, another position come up. Now, would you still be interested? I said yeah, why not? I looked at it, went through all the processes of interviews etc and got it and joined um, P&O UK and then worked with Ocean Village which then that brand dissolved in the two ships as we know, the Jewel and the Pearl, and it came down to Australia. So I got the opportunity to join the Australia fleet, which I took because I thought it's another brand, another product, another type of clientele, so I wanted to come and try it. So I've been down here now two years, joined um, August 2010. First ship was the Pacific Sun. Yep. And do you love this part of the world? Yeah, it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful part of the world. And I, I, never, and I think the thing about it is you would never... You would never go on holiday. I would never ever think to go to Vanuatu or New Caledonia as a holiday. You, you wouldn't travel that far yeah. from the Europe or United Kingdom to come here. You, you would travel to Australia and probably do your three, four, whatever weeks. But you would never um, think to go to New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Fiji. And looking forward to next year, Papua New Guinea. Yeah, that's right. Really yeah. Now, I saw you last night wearing a pair of uh, tartan trousers. Tartan so trousers. Does that does that suggest that um, <laughs> you're, a, you're a Scot? Yes, unfortunately, I uh, come from the cousin country of Australia. That's the unfortunate, unfortunate. Yeah, I'm from Scotland. I live in Glasgow, so I put my uh, tartan trues on. Not my native tartan. The one I wore, you saw last night, was the Hebridean granite tartan. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's more of a sort of darker grey. It's more modern tartan, but it's good. It goes with a sort of charcoal suit. So. Yeah. Well, I think so. just um, from yeah, my point of view as a passenger last night with the balloons and the 635 uh, champagne glasses and the laser show, it was like you were doing it for the first time, so that really sort of says it all about how you make it a fresh experience for so many people. Yeah, it's good fun. I love doing the champagne water for it. And our, our target is obviously how quickly we can build it. Uh, and 
and, and now again every week you do it, it's different because some weeks you get you get to a certain layer and a few glasses are off, so you've got to tweak it and move it around. But, uh, uh, so there are some failures? Oh, there's always a few. No, not so familiar. nothing ever falls down, I've never lost one. Yeah. But yeah, you always get to some level and sometimes you've got to tweak it a bit. Well, thanks very much and congratulations on the Thank perfect, you. Nice the perfect score with the champagne glasses. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Cheers.